we're back with an inside of the mind series one of my favorite actually and i really do look forward to making these ones once a year today is my birthday it's 11th of october 2023 meaning i am 24 so inside the mind of a 24 year old how exciting and there's gonna be a no cut one straight into it i wrote down some bullet points that have come into my mind throughout the year that i think will be good to talk about in this video and for me personally to look back on as the whole point of the series is to look back on throughout the years see how you've changed physical features <laughs> i've got a mullet at the moment been growing that around about the end of 2022 actually so starts to form i guess in 20 when i was 23 and now 24 it's in it's fully flowing as they say and i'm happy with it but we'll see we'll see where it takes me may come up with some changes going forward anyways back into the video inside the mind of a 24 year old what we're we going to be talking about well it's all about how or what is going through my mind if you've never watched this series before what's going through my mind as whatever age i'm at so just gonna be talking generally on life generally on specific topics that i've come across throughout the late year the 365 days and see if i can give value to people maybe that want to watch or personally for selfish reasons i like to look back on it and see how i developed as a person but also mainly developed psychologically like how my thoughts and how is my ideolect how i speak how's that changed what vocabulary am i using am i pronouncing things correctly you know the, or enunciating and these are all the things that to me make you up as a person all these different elements and i'm really interested for me personally like i said before to see how i've i've grown as a person so the first topic i've written down right in front of me is being more open and this this is an interesting one because it's very hard to allow yourself to not be vulnerable but allowing yourself to be or want challenges i made a previous video when i did a video every every wednesday for a year and that was last year and i, I did a video about challenges and this is what the point is it's the fact that i've developed that right and i've allowed myself to be open and wanting and almost accepting challenges because at the end of the day as we're going through life and as i've experienced 24 years however we have you want to say it, I've, I've experienced so many different challenges in different areas of life and i understand and through books i've read and through conversations i've had challenges will always and always come and to be honest with you that's what creates your character is what defines your character is one or a being presented with a challenge and two how you overcome it so a lot of people can either actually before i even carry on with that three run away from the challenge so people unfortunately what i see and what i hear is people run away from from the challenges number three point c because they don't like change it links in with change right change is very uncomfortable and unfortunately and fortunately the only way to actually grow and develop is through change but also at the same time we're afraid of it because our mind enjoys comfort biologically our mind wants us to grow up and be comfortable so when you are comfortable meaning you have shelter you have food a constant source of food and you have your hobby slash pleasures around you your mind doesn't want that to change it's comfortable it's happy therefore you feel happy right i'm going to do that happy but what's actually happened is you've your brain is just tricking you into not allowing yourself to grow right and being more open as the point i put put uh, down low here has allowed us or allowed me sorry to try all these new things right is it's quite a, a funny thing to say like i'm being more open but it's it really has allowed me to tackle tackle old problems and provide new solutions so as you develop you gain these experiences by being more open i'm opening and accepting more challenges i'm i i feel myself and see myself even revisiting some old challenges for example at the moment i'm studying for some exams and personally i've never enjoyed preparing for exams I'm not sure how everyone else feels but when when i used to prepare prepare for exams in school you get taught x amount of ways you don't get to really explore yourself you're you're told what to do rather than exploring what to do whereas now i've been presented the challenge the challenges i've got 16 exams to do so i've done four so far the challenge that's arisen is 
how do you how do you prepare how do you revise and so i'm teaching my mind to revisit these old these old problems that i used to have when i had exams in school and college and you train yourself or you get to look at look at these problems with a new point of view and now you're providing new solutions that actually work so i've done these exams i'm finding ways that work for me rather than what the school wants to work for you and i think that's very important because now I get to dictate how I work, when I work, why I work. That's the, also the main point. Why am I doing this? If, it, if I didn't have interest or want to do it, it would feel more forced. A lot, a lot of the time in school, these subjects that you choose are obviously forced, mandatory, by the government, by the education system. This one, mandatory? Not really, no. Is it, is volu I'm voluntarily doing this, voluntarily doing this. So for me, I enjoy it more because I'm, I chose to do it. I didn't have to do it. I wanted to do it and that to me has actually helped me overcome this said challenge for this example but reverting back to the first point being more open just really does allow you to get a, perceive the world in a in a bigger picture in terms of accepting like already accepting as soon as you step foot out of the door there's going to be challenges even the smallest ones and I always talk about these in the old videos you could be stuck in traffic and that may be a challenge or a mental challenge for you because you're you're doing nothing you're literally sat in a car you're stuck, you can't do much. That may be a challenge for some people, but for now, I'm open to everything at all. Like I don't really feel any emotions when something like as menial as that, and that's menial as a traffic jam comes into fruition. I don't care if that happens to me. I already have accepted that there's gonna be challenges throughout life. I don't even view that as a challenge, but that's just a, a small minor example. But these little things that can accumulate throughout the day to form the big challenge, which actually ruined your your emotions for me i've really overcome that i'm happy that i have so that was the first point of being more open and which has obviously allowed me to tackle new challenges or tackle old ones with new solutions the next point i've i've wrote down was adaptability now i've put here no matter the situation learning to react at quickly and effectively and that to me is key for not only with Darwin's evolution of survival of the fittest, the, the quickest that adapted, survived, hence why we're here today, and hence why you see other species around us, how they've evolved over time. Because they were, or let's revert back to Darwin's uh, theories. Think of the giraffe, right? The giraffe used to have a long neck, or sorry, a short neck, and it evolved over time to have a longer neck because the giraffes couldn't reach enough of the plants in the trees or the leaves in the trees with the smaller necks. So over time, they started growing and growing because survival of the fittest comes in. The giraffes had to adapt. They adapted you know, as quickly and sufficiently as genetics allowed. But over time, they've developed from having an issue and not being able to survive longer, longer to then gaining this new attribute to their, to their body and then being able to survive longer. Now we have giraffes all over Africa surviving, hopefully, for the foreseeable future. And it's cool to see that in action right obviously that's a long time period of for, for genetics to evolve over time but the same applies here just on a shorter time frame adaptability is so important especially in today's age if we're talking as humans because everything has been sped up massively especially because of technology technology has allowed everything to happen like the speed of light with internet and communication being sped up and now technology with let's just say delivery apps, delivering quicker to your door, delivering Amazon, for example, next day delivery, everything's speeding up. And eventually we're going to get to the point where it's going to be everything's instantaneous. And it's a bit, it's quite dangerous. We're not going to talk, debate that now. But reversing back to adaptability, you have to be able to be chucked into any situation and be able to survive like that. So for me, I'm very confident because I like putting myself in those situations. And it reverts back to point one or links back to point one where you're more open the challenges you get to improve your adaptability because you're you and your confidence because if someone put me in a spot of right i need you to create a podcast in three hours time you have three hours to create a podcast for me edit it and upload it i'll get it done i don't go oh i don't know how to do this i don't know how to do that i get it done and that's just the mindset i've developed over the last two three years i think specifically because I understand that that brings me or makes me a very valuable person to any to any team. I've become a very valuable asset 
So no matter the task, no matter what it is, I'll get it done. It won't be always to the highest standard. Things like art I know are, I'm terrible at, I'm not very good at art, or creative side of thinking or, or drawing, those types of things, terrible at. But I'll get, give it my best shot, and at least I'll get it done. That's the important thing. You have to be able to adapt or you will die. It's, it's the, the very <laughs> harsh way of saying it, but that is the best way to look at it. So if you, if you start putting yourself out there, if you feel very comfortable right now while watching this, just in general life, not while watching the video, I hope you feel comfortable watching the video, but if you feel general in your, in your general life, change that up. As soon as you become too comfortable, you're not growing. You're not pushing yourself as much as you can. So... For me personally, I've actually booked a, a big trip away to Asia for the end of the, on the end of the year for like three and a half weeks, because the thought of it scared me, and that's what really made me book it. Along with all the opportunities that I got to go, you know, you don't get opportunity often, but the main driving factor in my head was I'm, I guess I'm scared. It's not that sounds worse than it does, but it's more linking to the uncomfortable. It makes me feel uncomfortable, and that's a good thing. Because I know that I'll grow so much from one traveling to a new continent I've never been to, and two traveling on a long distance flight like that. It has to happen at some point. You know, that's two points already. Three, experiencing life in a whole new country, in a whole new world, pretty much, um, with a friend. But you know, fair enough, solo, right? We both will have to adapt quickly into the environment to thrive in it and make the most of the time and situation that where we are, and that is also coincidentally or I don't think that's the right word but it's also exciting at the same time so that's just an example I've been doing or recently linking to the point of comfortability I don't when I feel comfortable too comfortable I change it up you get into a routine like you are probably watching this video you're in a, a specific routine for work life general you're feeling too comfortable switch up it need, you need to keep switching up and adapting because the quicker you adapt the quicker you're able to become more efficient and grow and gain more skills. To me, that when that clicked in my head, I haven't changed since, and I've never regret that. I've seen big growth in the gym. I've gained, I think, four or five kilograms from the start of this year. I can't remember, but a lot of that is muscle because I'm always changing up. When I'm feeling too comfortable with the routine I am in the gym, I change up. Even if it's an exercise that you change, it doesn't have to be like I'm doing a big trip to Asia. That's obviously a big life push, but... Even your just your general routine, what can you do differently to change it up, to push out your comfort zone, to learn something new? I even read in a book recently, and they said the book is by James Clear, the the one I can't I can't remember the title, but I think everyone will know the, the James Clear one. And all it was, they just said very very much reiterating the point I did. They even said, just take a different way to work, try something completely different, push yourself out of the comfort zone of where you feel oh, I feel so safe and secure and, and comfort and you're just doing your daily monotonous routine, but without any change, how are you going to see any growth? And every time I ask that, like, where's the growth in my life? If I don't have some sort of growth within a week, I change it all up. Because to me, that's what creates a fulfilling life. You need that growth in yourself, personal development. You need to grow the people around you and help the people around you. If you aren't providing that value through your growth, what is, what's the point of living? And that's quite the, the, the harsh stance I have on life, right? It's very black and white. It's either growth or change up. I don't have time to stagnate. And personally, I don't think you do either. We don't have long, right, to, to enjoy ourselves. So why, why sit in a bubble, a comfort bubble, as they call it, a comfort zone? Enjoy yourself. Go out there. Push yourself. Stop feeling comfortable and actually go and achieve something that you wouldn't have done if you just stayed in your monotonous routine. Like I said, try a new way to work. That's just one step. Use the momentum as always. Then you'd be like, oh, let's try this different drink. Let's try this different food. Oh, let me try and cook this food. Oh, let me try this different genre of books. Like these things, or even let's start making videos on YouTube. Who cares? It's for you and for your growth, which can then bring value to everyone around you and obviously yourself. And it... it it translates to every aspect of life until you start doing it until until you start putting one foot in front of the other you won't actually experience that and i really urge everyone to go out and experience that and that's the rant on adaptability and where it can go to so my third point just looking at down here is not just saying there's a problem but providing a solution to said problem 
equals initiative. So obviously that's in note form. And what I was thinking with this was a lot of the times and never naming her in any names, you know, just general, you know, work in a working environment in, in life and you walk around in public, you hear people or even news and, and things like that, social media, people complain, people love to complain because it's easy. They say, ah, oh, there's a problem. Ah, oh, there's another problem. But to me, especially in, in things that I can control, let's pause, there's, there's two things, right? One, you can complain about everything. You don't gain anything. But to me, if you're complaining about something which is in your control rather than out of your control, that's where the biggest issue is. I don't, I don't complain often, if any, at all, right? But what really, I don't think aggregate's the right word, but agitate yeah similar but it's it's sad or disappointing to see people give up so easily without thinking of a solution they have an issue in their life let's say they've got a flat tire a nice classic one that I like using they've got a flat tire or even they don't they're not happy with the body that they have instead of looking to improve and just acting straight onto the solution they waste so much time complaining about it about said problem oh I've got a flat tire I don't know what I'm going to do or oh, I don't have the body I want. I just you know I wish I was that. I wish I was that. But they don't take any action. And to me, it makes no sense, no logical sense, why people aren't taking a pragmatic approach. To me, example one, flat tire. Okay, instantly pull over, call the call AA, whoever you've got you as your provider to swap a tire. If you have a, if you have a spare tire, I actually do have a spare tire in my new car. Swap it over yourself. You get given all the equipment you need. Swap it over, get it done. Instead of sitting there going, ah, oh, you know, I've got a flat tire. I just don't know what to do. You know, wasting so much time. And with the gym or with, sorry, the body being not happy with your body. Why, why, why complain and not take action? What do you really achieve from that? Nothing. You, in my opinion, people complain for attention and they don't ever actually want to improve on that situation fully because they would have already done it already and by that i mean if i had a problem like i just said i'd get straight on it i i'm very to the point like you have an issue i'll find a solution i don't go right here's an issue i'm going to complain about it and then maybe in a couple weeks time i'll find a solution you need to be quicker than that once again adapting or linking back to adaptability you got to be able to adapt quicker because everyone around you is complaining focus on you Focus on how you can improve all your problems in your life by one, not just saying there's a problem, but actually providing a, a solution to it instantly using your initiative. And that will obviously help you personally, but then you start, start spreading this message to people around you and showing them, teaching them how to do that and avoid the negative cycle of problem, complain, problem, complain, problem, complain, maybe a solution, then problem, complain. It doesn't work. It's not part of life or not part of a healthy, fulfilling life. A key point that I have written, I wrote down here is I did my first fast. I did a 36 hour fast, <laughs> taking a point away from the three rants that we've just done or rants, I should say. The, the 36 hour fast was really tough. And I really do recommend it for people that are wanting to push themselves again out of their comfort zone. It was probably one of the hardest mentally challenging things I've done this year in terms of, in terms of the 23 year old. It took, I did it over during a work, during work as well, so during a weekday. And you feel so lethargic and so obviously lack of energy. And to me, the benefit was one, you can prove mentally to yourself that you can do something you put your mind to, despite how hard it is. And two, the benefits, the health benefits, I believe it's 48 hours plus of fast where you start destroying weaker cells in your body and replenishing them and regenerating them. So I didn't hit that point, but it's really good obviously for fat burning as well. I wanna to get to that point where I can go to that cellular level and, and start destroying weak cells, because why do we need weak cells? We wanna eat them up and then regenerate stronger. And the feeling you get when you, and this was just a water fast by the way, nothing but water. But the, the feeling you get from just eating straight after the first bite, you have to slowly, Build back in, kind of dump your loads of food back into, but slowly eat back into it. The feeling you get is so euphoric. I really do recommend anyone 
try maybe 24 hours to start with then 36 then 48 and try and work your way up to 48 because that was really really worth it mentally and obviously physically worth the challenge but you i'm warning you you will feel drained you just have to find the mental mental fortitude inside you which everyone does have my next one was being able to say you were wrong during a discussion is no is very powerful and that is a good point and that's something i've started to learn this year properly where you're in a conversation you're in a discussion either about a topic that you're very interested in or passionate about that's the hardest where you're passionate about something and you're wrong or you're just in a general conversation and you're wrong being able to be like oh you know what you're right and removing your ego and just saying yeah you know in this situation you're right my bad is actually very hard to do especially i notice a lot of us i mean no one likes to be wrong right so having the the strength and ability to say you're wrong in a conversation in a discussion especially about things you're passionate about shows a real strong character to me if i make a mistake now and this it also links to work if you make a mistake at work put your hand up straight away make mistakes everyone makes mistakes but admitting to your own mistakes is actually very hard but it's a very attractive characteristic to have as a human being and if you can teach yourself to have that and learn how to have that over time i really do think that will help you in a work environment in a social environment in a, i guess in all environments involving other humans because people will very much you will gain more respect if you're being able to uh if, you, if you're being able to say yeah that was me apologies that does go a long way and that's what i've learned through through work coincidentally and also through social situations where you know i have obviously i've been wrong many times and will be in the future but putting my hand up straight away ah oh, you know what you're right it hurts at first but the ego is needs to be removed right so that's that's another point last couple of points i've got here just to wrap up the video really is jumping into fear rather than away which we've already discussed with about the comfort zone right i'm jumping into it this year towards the end anyways because to me that's important for growth we've already touched on that without that growth you stagnate or even worse decline and to me i think that's the biggest fear of mine is declining i don't want to ever decline always or even stagnate for a long period of time but then after touching on that topic i've got adding to a routine one by one to increase overall success rather than all at once this is really stood out to me because I used to, and if you watch one of my old videos, I believe it was 18 or 19 year old, where I talk about routine and I didn't like a routine and I wanted to break out of it, which I did. And the reason why I didn't like that routine came to, came to my mind and I understood it finally was because the routine wasn't set by me. It was set by school. It was set by college. I had no control of that routine. You know, you get given these set hours, set subjects and set times you can eat lunch and to me it was bonkers it just did not sit well with me and that really ruined my perception of routine but as i've aged as i've grown grown through the years i've gained more insight into why routine is so valuable the most successful people however you want to perceive that always talk about routine and consistency and to me your routine really does define your future or your characteristics also as a person if you have a strong routine you're more than likely going to be successful in whatever you pursue so for me i have a routine around gym so i have set days i go and consistency around the gym guess what i've seen i've seen success in the gym i built muscle i've gained strength i've hit pbs after pbs after pbs and they keep coming and that's obviously a good feeling physically but also mentally you know if you've ever not gone to the gym try it for honestly try it for three four weeks set yourself a couple goals say you're going to start on 20 kilograms and then by week four you're on 30 that feeling you get of growing from 20 kilograms to 30 despite it being a small weight depending on the exercise is monumental and guess what that that snippet of that four week period translates to everything else you're doing throughout life because if on that first week I'm on 20 and the week after I'm on 22 and a half, guess what? I go home from the gym, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling happy. All other aspects of my life are getting impacted by that because I'm feeling 
like I've just accomplished something and that usually spreads into other aspects. So now at work, you find a new way to, or create a new task or, or find a new way to find a new solution, uh, find a new solution to a current problem the business has. Then you're in the good books with people that help run the business. You know, it, it really does translate along. And I've really noticed that. I hope I'm a prime example because I feel like I've done insane amounts in the last, even the last like six, seven months. It's really that mindset of consistent routine really has helped. And I touched upon in the, in the notes here, one by one increase. What do I mean by that? Well, when people, when people tell you, oh, you need a good routine, success, you know, root, consistency, what I've just said to you, it doesn't mean go look at, let's just say, let's use Elon. Everyone knows Elon Musk. Let's use Elon Musk's routine. Don't just go and copy his routine. What you need to do is break down your routine. So take a step back from your life. Look at what avenues want you have. Look at what avenues you want. And how do you get to those avenues or those paths that you want to get on? And how do you build up to it? You can't just go jump in the deep end and be thrown in and expect to swim first time. And even then, you won't be able to swim consistently first time. You need to build it up. So what, what I would do personally is take that step back, write down everything you have in your life, write down things that you're passionate about and go from there and be like, right, how is this incorporated in my routine? If not, how do I incorporate it? What steps do I need to take? For me personally, it was about diet, right? And I asked people that I work with and, and for help and what I can prove and friends. And to me, it was just adding one extra meal. It sounds so easy. Do you know how hard it is when you're, you're used to eating three meals a day and you having to expand your stomach and eat more to gain more energy, to gain more protein, uh, to rebuild, to use that protein to rebuild the muscles through protein synthesis, right? When you destroy or break down the, uh, your muscles in the gym. That to me, adding that into my routine was hard. And that's why I mean by one-to-one. I had a routine of, let's say I wake up at seven and I get to work for 7.45, eight and work until like 5, 5.30 go to the gym at lunch. That's a normal routine. But what I've slowly been doing is right now, I know I'm trying to still, I still do investing. So now I'm, I'm waking up at 6.20 and I've changed that one aspect. Didn't change it straight away. Changed it after a couple of months. After I got into a comfortable or solid routine, feeling comfortable, I change it up again. See, they're both linked. Changed it. And then I've also changed my food. So I obviously have my breakfast when I wake up. And then I start eating the second meal at 10 o'clock. I added that again after a couple months. You don't add that straight away from your routine. You add it in after a couple months. I started meal prepping for every lunch. I had the same chicken, rice, avocado, spinach, and broccoli. That didn't start straight away. That took me, I think, three months to get to that point. So I started slowly incorporating it, and then it becomes second nature, and you feel better because you're eating healthy. And it's all about adding those things incrementally. You don't jump it in. You literally just don't jump it in at once. You just take your time and you add it in one by one. And so you don't get overwhelmed. And it actually allows you to tackle. And guess what? As of both things, the more you add things into your routine, the quicker you get at adapting. And once again, it links again to adaptability. And that's why I've really put adaptability in this as well, because it links with everything. I'm able to adapt quicker. And now I can add in things to my routine near enough instantaneously, as in the delay of it, me saying, okay, I'm going to add this in to doing it is days, not, not weeks, not months. It's days, if that. So to me, or well, the takeaway message from this point personally is don't, don't create a routine, a golden routine. And don't expect your credit golden routine. Take your time, create a, a basis or a layer and add to it. Keep adding to it like a cake, add those layers to the cake. And eventually you'll get to the point where, right, I'm happy with this. How can I even tweak it more and make it more efficient or even more simple? How do I save time here and there? You know, can I brush my teeth in the shower? Those little things that add up. Think about it. Really trying to improve your, your routine. Got a couple more points here. We've got some whys are only understood through experience. And that I remember writing this because once again, it was, it was a shower slash bathroom thought. I was thinking, right, how when people ask you to say or always ask why, and that's one of my videos asking why. There's only so much you can learn from questioning things, right? There's some points where I think this is more relevant to children growing up or parenthood as well, where 
kids will ask, oh, why can't I do that? Why can't I not do that? Until they actually experience why, not all things, but some things, they won't fully grasp it. It's impossible to fully grasp until you're trucked in that situation, right? For example, we love examples. If I ask why, if I say, right, some whys are only on sister experience, and I say, okay, well, why should I not go to prison? It's fairly obvious why people don't go to prison or why you shouldn't go to prison. It's been made out to be terrible. It's the only place where you, you, you go where something you've done something really bad, something wrong, against the law, etc. That's why you don't want to go to prison. But then you ask, right, why shouldn't I drink three coffees in a row? People may say, oh, because you, you, you'll feel really on edge, you'll feel really hyped. And you don't, you can't fully grasp that until you do it, right? And it's these, there's so many of those different scenarios, and maybe there are two extremes and people may argue, blah, blah, blah. But my point is, there is really some things throughout life where why is the correct way or correct question to ask? But there is some experiences out there that you just have to do and experience yourself. For example, some people go traveling and then you ask, why'd you go traveling? And, and then people say it was life changing. You think, hmm, probably not. And then you do it yourself and then you see why. Those are the types of whys that you, you'll find them throughout life. And I think you'll be able to pinpoint them. And if you ask, if someone told you an answer after you've asked why, and you don't really, it doesn't really hit you, it doesn't create that sentiment or that value that you want from the why, it's probably one you have to experience, right? I think to me that really blew my mind. I was like, wow, that, that is so true. So I'm looking forward to see it, asking why, as always, to learn more, but also experiencing a couple more things as I'm always trying to do. This one I'm going to leave to our last, but the second last one I just want to point on is half full versus half empty mindset. Half full adds so much more to it. Positive, more to come. And this is a point I actually had the other day, the other night when I was in bed. I was thinking, people really do think half half full, or half empty. And for me, life's always half full. You can always add more. And that's the, the point I'm trying to reiterate here, right? I'm trying to reiterate that you have a glass and this you are the glass and it's half full. This is all your experiences, everything you do in life, your routine, family, friends, etc., etc. That's all you. And then you've got all this up here, this air. There's nothing there. You can you can fill it all, right? Your body and your mind is is your glass. All your experience and everything is inside, which is the water, and the air is is the future, the excitement, the unknown. Whereas some people view that still the exact same scenario, yet they view the air as as negative, and that to me just blows my mind. I think how can you view something like life as negative when you you're lucky to have it? And it gets taken away so quickly. You start deteriorating health-wise, memory and everything. And to me, why waste your time even grasping that? Think about it, right? You have this air left, right? You have that little bit of air at the top. Fill it as, with, as much as you can, right? Why would you stop pouring into, to, into your glass? Not even halfway through your life. Not even a quarter way through your life. Just because of something called fear. Fear should be there to motivate you, in my opinion. Fear of death is a good motivator to push you to do more. Fear of the unknown, that should excite you. You know, this, this water is known. This is the unknown. That You shouldn't be scared of this. If you're half full and you're scared of the unknown, or half empty, I should say, flip that round. This, this unknown part is what is probably the most exciting part of life. Not only do you get to experience more, but you get to add and gain value from that unknown and keep filling your glass up until eventually the glass shatters and unfortunately you no longer need this. So why not keep filling your glass until the brim and overflow it? And then that overflowing just spreads to other people's glasses. I think that's such a cool analogy where you have the power to fill your glass up as much as you can. You have the choice of that. No one else does. Your mum and your dad are not going to choose to fill up your glass. You have to fill up your own glass. So you get to fill your own glass and you can keep filling it and keep filling it until you pop, right? And to me, you need to view life like that. You need to view it as there are so many adventures and experiences that you can gain from life without running away from the idea of it.
So next time you get asked a question, always view it as half full. Don't view it as half empty. Don't view it as, you know, I've already, I'm do, time's running out, my glass is getting emptier and emptier, I'm going to die eventually. That's so morbid and so unproductive. There's no, there's no real value from that. So flip that mindset around and see the positive of life. And the last point I really want to touch on for me personally is the balance. I have also made another video previously, a small one. Balance to me is really hard. I think, I think balancing all aspects of life, whether you want to view it as the four pillars, uh, health, wealth, love and happiness, I believe, or view it as any other aspects, you have your pillars in life. And finding balance between your work, then your family, and then hobbies, friends. It's, it really is, in my opinion, I think it's impossible to have an equal balance, especially as you get older. So when you're younger, the balance is obviously more towards social side, friends, family, you have work, you have school, and that's about it. But as you get older, you know more people, you get more experience in different things, and work a lot of the time eats you up right so having the balance of oh i'm going to spend you know 25 percent work 25 percent family it just doesn't happen unfortunately and brutally honest if you want to be the best of the best as in you want to be successful in something it can't be balanced you have to put most of your time into work or most of your time into that hobby to become the best at it to then reap the rewards from from that which then you can share with your family so it comes in stages and I think I'm in that stage where I've already accepted and that's, I've accepted I can't balance it. I used to, I used to worry about not balancing it and I, I viewed or understood that I'm not balancing it. But once I've accepted or once I accepted that I didn't or couldn't balance it, it's when I really started truly thriving where I put more effort into, into my work and more effort into seeing friends and family. But when I saw them, I knew that this was the smaller balance side and that I'd live more in the moment and give more of my attention there when I could because it's such a small chance that I get in my daily, weekly routine that when I do see everyone, I make the most of it, right? I push myself extra at work, but I also have a bit of fun with the friends, the family when I can and make the most of that because at the end of the day, you need to you need to somehow find find the little balances in life if you can, you know, work hard play hard is what I've, I've been living by recently so every time I'm doing double the work I'm having double the fun some way or another so hopefully leave it on a more positive note I'm very happy with how I've developed in 23 as a 23 year old I should say I think 24 is going to be very exciting obviously starting off going into another constant end of the year and we have a lot of a lot of interesting opportunities as you grow older and I'm looking I'm personally looking forward to challenging myself more in new topics in my job in other aspects and other business ventures that I want to do I think there's so much opportunity and I'm really looking forward to me as a 24 four year old making my you know 25 year old happy or making my 18 year old self happy or even my 30 year old self happy because to me that's the most important I'm going to be looking back at these and seeing the growth my personal growth in, in development and also career growth and, and however else you want to measure it but thank you very much for watching and make sure you keep hitting the gym make sure you you stay or keep creating value some way or another become that asset and stay happy